We want to welcome you to DC3. It's so great to see everybody. If somebody's sitting with you at the house or sitting with you at the Northport campus, just turn to them and say, you are awesome, almost as awesome as me, and I am glad you are with us today. Today, as we continue in this series called Reset, last week we established three things, and that is God wants to reset us to mint condition, man, restore us, our lives, but not only that, our church. And three things we talked about is we're going to remain faithful and true to the message. The message never changes. The mission, we're going to recommit to that. And to, we also talked about we're going to revisit the methods of how we do it. But today I want to move on and talk about something today and ask you a series of questions. You know, in the world today, there's a lot of chaos and controversy. I mean, if, if you don't know what's going on, you've been under a rock or you just don't watch the news or read the news at all, but there's a lot of protesting, a lot of, of election stuff, a lot of financial uncertainty. And, and here's a couple questions for you. What are people really protesting for? What are people really voting for? What are people working for? Is it just like the old band Loverboy from Canada used to sing when I'm in high school and everybody's working for the weekend? What are people staying isolated for? What are people wearing masks for? What are people being careful for? Well, I'm going to tell you the answer to that question. People are desperately looking for a better way. Everybody say better way. What are people working out for, right? What are people socializing and going online to chat and find friends and maybe you're trying to connect in eHarmony? What are people playing and doing recreation for? What are people moving for? I talked to a real estate agent recently that said there's a shortage of homes in our community because people are moving out of certain areas and coming here to southwest Florida. And if you're selling, man, it's a great time to sell. And she said people are desperately looking for a better place. People are looking for a better way. What are people quitting for? What are people getting high for? What are people hurting other people for? What are people divorcing for? What are people cheating for? What are people studying for? What are people hoping for? And the answer is all the same. Say it with me. People are desperately seeking a better way. And here's, here's the point of tension for us today. You see, there is not just a better way. There is a best way. In fact, the Word of God tells us there is only one, say it with me, way. And it is Jesus Christ. So what we are resetting to today is that we here, the church of Jesus Christ, at DC3 and all churches, we have the way. And we must reset to reveal so Jesus can restore us, our families, our churches, our communities, our country. And here is the really hard news for those looking for that better way. There is no way except for Jesus. All ways end in a dead-end road without Jesus walking that path with us. But what about those people, Steve, who are doing it a different way, a different religion, no religion, no Jesus, no church? I'm going to tell you, I say this in love and not condemnation. So many people today have lost their way. So many people today have lost their way. And here's the real danger. There's a lot of people in the church that think they are living the way that are lost and have lost their way. I want to give you what I call today the three R's of reset. Back in school, we called it arithmetic, reading, and writing. You know, those aren't even spelled with an R. I don't even know where they came from. I guess they just sound like an R. But I want to give you three words on reset. Week number two. Number one, say repentance. Say rebellion. 
And lastly, say revolution. Let's say those one more time. Say it loud so your dog can hear it. Repentance, rebellion, and revolution. You might even chat right now if you're on your phone. Just, just type it into the comment. It's about repentance emoji. Rebellion, woo, sad face, mad face. Revolution, here we go. Go to Luke chapter 5. Lord, let us hear your words today. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Now, something you need to know about tax collectors, the worst of sinners, betrayed the Jewish nation, working for the Roman government, scamming money, all about greed. And he says to this tax collector, follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi, check this out, had a great banquet for Jesus at his house and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. Now, how many know tax collectors knew how to throw a wild party? I imagine at a tax collector's party, it kind of resembled what we back in college would call a frat party. If you've ever seen the old movie Animal House, you shouldn't watch it. Come on, somebody. So Jesus is hanging with all these tax collectors that Levi, at Levi's house. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples. Now, how many know it was such a good party that it was attracting the church people? <laughs> they really wanted to be in the party, I think. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples, asking, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to, say it with me, repentance. Now here's the crazy thing we know as we go through the word of God in the New Testament. As Paul wrote doctrine for us, there is none righteous, no, not one. And what Jesus was subtly doing here is saying, you think you're righteous, but you're really not. But I'm going to spend time with those who know they're lost, who know they've lost their way. And I'm going to call them, not just to befriend them and hang out with them in in, in their parties, but to call them to repentance. And what is repentance? I'm going to show you what repentance is in Proverbs 28, 13. It says, people who conceal their sins will not prosper. This often happens with what we call pharisaical type people, religious type people. They confess and claim to have righteousness when they actually have lust and hate and prejudice and jealousy and envy in their heart. People who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. Now, I want you to hear me today as we reset. There's some of you who are watching, listening today, You know, before we go any further, there's stuff in your life that is not in God's will. That's what sin is. Everything that's against God's plan, God's will, it is sin outside of his boundaries, and you know it's in you, and it's concealed. Some of you are hiding in lifestyles, habits, attitudes. You know it's there. And what we know is if we have sin in our church that is not dealt with, we will not prosper. Your family will not prosper. That porn addiction is going to destroy your marriage. That substance addiction will destroy your body. That prejudice that you're not confessing or being honest with yourself about people of other cultures will destroy the unity as you try to win the world and unite the world. But here's the good news. But if they confess, everybody say confess. If they confess and turn from them, it's not just enough to say, God, I got it, I'm sorry. You got to confess it, and then you got to get away from it. In other versions, it says you got to forsake it. In other words, you got to go, baby, I break up with you. I am no longer going that way. I'm going the best way. You see, what we have to do is recognize. Everybody say recognize. We have to recognize that in us is a nature, a sinful desire to be against God, to be a rebel. Everybody say rebel. Recognize the rebel and repent. You can't repent until you confess there's a rebel in me. 
And all of us know it. If you think hard enough, if you, if you, if you just open your heart and you look at the times where you're going, man, I, those times when I did bad things, when I, when I say bad things, when I'm hateful, when I'm selfish, there is something in you going, don't be that. Don't be that. But we just go, no. And when we say no to the Holy Spirit, we are saying, I do not yield to your authority. And rebellion is not yielding and not submitting to anyone in authority. You're saying, no, I'll do it my way. That doesn't work in God's kingdom. And this is really hard for us in America today because we're about rugged individualism and rights and freedom. But how many know life doesn't work without order and without authority? And what we're seeing right now is people struggling against a way And they think there's a better way, but they are rebelling. You say, Steve, are you downing protests and movements and and, and voting? No, no, no. Go with me, Ralph. Go with me. You see, we got to recognize the rebel and repent. we we got to recognize that there is a God and a, a nature in us that wants to go against him, that causes us to sin and that separates us from God. C.S. Lewis says it this way, a creature revolting against a creator is revolting against the source of his own powers. He says, including even his power to revolt. He says, it's like the scent of a flower trying to destroy the flower. Guys, God wants to restore us to this amazing, abundant life. He is the giver of life, and without Jesus, there is no life. And we at DC3 today have got to commit to the fact that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And you can't just say it. you got to live it. you got to walk it. And then you got to turn away from everything else and follow Jesus. So what happens? Why do we get into trouble, Steve, even as Christians? What i got to tell you what I said a few weeks ago in the series Graves to Gardens. When it comes to trouble in your life, you got to make yourself the number one suspect. you got to make yourself number one. And none of us want to do that. We want to blame other people. It's those people. It's those policemen. It's that culture. It's those politicians. It's corporations. It's people who don't work. It's that color, it's that school, it's that system, it's that football team that they follow, like FSU or the Gators. They should be following Alabama, everybody say roll tide. You see, repentance is crucial when you deal with the rebel because repentance is the crucifixion of the rebel. Repentance is saying, my God, my God. I want to follow you. I am a sinner. Now I turn. And when you turn, you starve. You crucify the rebel in you. It's the only way to live the victorious, abundant life. Those who belong to Jesus, Galatians 5, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. This is the danger. While we can walk and live in the Spirit, if we're not careful, Paul is saying here, don't become conceited because you're getting stuff right, because you're following the rules. Because when we start becoming conceited and say, I got it all together, man, look at me, I'm a Christian. I'm doing things right. I don't cuss anymore. I don't drink anymore. I don't sleep around anymore. I don't cheat on my taxes anymore. I give to the poor. I show up. I go to Sunday school. My kids are in children's church. Wow, 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 wow. All of a sudden, look at me. I'm better than those people. I'm going to tell you, there's a subtle thing that begins to happen right there. The moment you think that thought, I'm so glad I'm better. Remember that story in the Word of God where the Pharisee was praying all these prayers and he saw the sinner who was crouched down and saying, God, I am not worthy of you. And the Pharisee said, I'm so glad I'm not like that guy. And Jesus said, you wish you were like that guy because that guy knows the way. You don't. And what happens is there's a subtle rebellion that happens out of our religion. And guys, I think this is why we are losing the war for the heart of our country, our community, even our kids today. We have to be very careful, write it down, that your relationship with God does not subtly turn into a religious rebellion. 
As we bring this home, I want to tell you a story that I used to talk about in worship a lot. It's, it's, it's a tragedy. Have you ever watched a movie and one of the characters you love so much gets killed? He's out of the movie, and I'm like, no! Spock can't die! <laughs> I'm old school, sorry. No! They get not that character. It's kind of like the story with Moses. In the first month, the whole Israelite community, this is number, Numbers chapter 20, arrived at the desert of Zen and they stayed at Kadesh. There Miriam died and was buried. How many know Moses was probably feeling that, right? Now there was no water for the community. The people gathered in opposition to Moses and Aaron. How many love to be in leadership when people are against you? They quarreled with Moses. So they're arguing with Moses. Moses lost his sister. They're in opposition to Moses and Aaron. Now they're fighting with him. If we had only died when our brothers fell dead before the Lord. Oh my gosh. Why did you bring the Lord's community into this wilderness? To set you free. He didn't say that, but that's what he's thinking. That we and our livestock should die here. How many want to slap somebody right there? Pop. Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to this terrible place? Wait a minute. You were enslaved in Egypt. You were getting beaten in Egypt. It has no grain or figs, grapevines, or pomegranates. There's no water to drink. Moses and, Aaron, Moses and Aaron went from the assembly to the entrance of the tent of meeting and fell face down. And the glory of the Lord appeared to them. Now, how many think it should have been to other people falling face down? Right? That doesn't seem fair. You got this mob of people protesting against Moses, complaining, bickering. Just like we see our whole culture on all sides doing now. And it's not because they didn't have a legitimate need. It's the way they were going about it. Moses and Aaron went in from the assembly to the entrance of the tent of meeting and fell face down. And the glory of the Lord appeared to them. The Lord said to Moses, take the staff and you and your brother Aaron gather the assembly together. And here, watch what he said. Speak to that rock before your eyes and it will pour out its water. Now, what we know is way back, he had struck the rock with his staff and they had this miraculous water. He said, you will bring water out of the rock for the community so they and their livestock can drink. So Moses took the staff from the Lord's presence just as he commanded him. He and Aaron gathered the assembly together in front of the rock and Moses said to them, watch this. Listen, you rebels. Listen, you rebels. Must we bring you water out of this rock? Then Moses, who was supposed to speak to the rock, raised his arm and struck the rock twice with his staff. Water gushed out, and the community and their livestock drank. How many went, okay, yeah, Moses showed them, but he did not obey God. And when you don't obey God, what does that make you? A rebel. A sinner. And watch what happens when sin manifests itself, is created in you. But the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, because you did not trust in me enough to honor me as holy in the sight of the Israelites, even though we know they're griping and complaining, God said, you will not bring this community into the land I give them. Moses missed the promised land. Because he rebelled for a moment against God. And guys, while we live in grace, let me show you this. As Christians, we have to be very careful daily to confess our sins. Not just to confess it, but to turn away from it and say, God, search my heart. Search my attitude. Search the fact that I may be looking at crowds, at protesters, at police, at politicians, and I may have hate in my heart. I may have rebellion in my heart when I should have revolution in my heart. You see, rebellion is about what you're against about what you defy, where, rebel, where revolution is about what you're for. I want you to be careful that your relationship with God does not subtly turn into a religious rebellion as we take it home today with one final verse of Scripture. 
We see in the book of Luke that while he was still speaking, a crowd came up. And the man who was called Judas, one of the twelve, was, we lead, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? This is tragic. Are you rebelling against me, Judas? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? Should we get the mob? Should we strike them? And one of them even struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his right ear. But Jesus answered, no more of this. No more of this. Jesus is saying to our culture today in love, no more evil for evil. No more hurt for hurt. No more angry words for angry words. Stop and listen. Stop and love. Stop and lead people to the way. Come on, DC3. We have to show people the way. And he touched the man's ears and healed him. Jesus did not come to kill them. He came to heal them. DC3 does not exist to kill a movement, to kill an abortion clinic, to kill whatever opinion you think is anti-church. We are here to heal them, to lead them to Jesus. And that's revolutionary, not rebellion. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him, am I leading A rebellion? Did you hear that? Jesus asked them. I mean, he challenged them. He called their rebellion, their religiousness out. He said, am I leading a rebellion? Jesus knew he was about to go to his death, yet he was under control. He was a revolutionary, not a rebel. Am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs? Every day I was with you in the temple courts. He's talking love words here. And you do not lay a hand on me. But this is your hour when darkness reigns. My friends, today, Jesus came to lead a revolution, not a rebellion. DC3, we've got a reset. It's not about what we're against. It's about what we're for. It's about who we're for. It's about Who we follow. Because anything else, any of the rules, any of the telling people how wrong they are, that's that's about rebellion against rebellion. When we tell people how right God is, come and see, that's about revolution. Revolution is about turning. Repentance is about turning. Rebellion is about defying. And guys, we're not here to defy people. We're here to lead people to Jesus. We're not here, as John Ortberg says, to build fences. We're here to dig wells so people come to drink the living water. And we don't worry about who's in and who's out. We worry about Jesus Christ being preached because he is the only answer for the problems. He is the healing of the racial divide. He is the ones that will reach out to the hearts of people What if we understood that the beginning of men's rebellion against God was and is the lack of a thankful heart? What if everybody, listen to me right now, what if we started and what if our families begin to look more at what we have and what we should be thankful for just for the sheer fact that God has saved us and everything else is a bonus? Our jobs are a bonus. Our life, our breath, our health is a bonus. Our church building, our new carpet, where you're sitting, sitting by the pool in your car, it's a bonus that we should be grateful for. It's a blessing that we should share. What if we begin to say, how much can I give away rather than how much can I make and take? Our welfare needs go away. Our poor is taken care of. It's very sad that the government has to do the job of the church. And I'm just as guilty. What if every person screaming at each other on the street for noble causes, right? 
We don't want to see anybody treated unfairly. We, don't, we want to understand black lives matter, absolutely. We want to understand there are so many great policemen defending our communities. We want to understand that there are people in the Democratic Party that stand for noble values, people in the Republican Party, people in the Libertarian Party that stand for things. But here's the deal, guys. If we're not doing it for the sake of a revolution to Jesus Christ, it's all for naught. But if we can humble ourselves and go, Lord, help me to treat people better than myself. Let me live like you did and make myself a servant. How many know our problems will begin to fade? We will begin to say, how can I help you? How can I understand you? How can I treat you like Jesus treated you? How can I bring value to every person, including women, children, disabled, people of different color and races, just like Jesus did all throughout his life? You see today, guys, it's not about rebellion. It's about repenting, crucifying rebellion, and becoming a revolutionary. I want to pray with everybody right now. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to begin to search your heart for anything that is not of God. And if you ask the Holy Spirit, He will help you see where you are need to say, God, I'm sorry. And you don't just stop there. You say, God, this is my sin, and now I turn away from it. I want to repent so I can be a part of your revolution, bringing your kingdom to a dark world. And guys, I want to tell you again, I'm not here to stand against a movement or a protest. I, I understand why. To some degree, everyone is doing what they're doing, but here's the truth. As Dr. Martin Luther King showed us, if it is not based in the love of Jesus, it is evil for evil, hurt for hurt, pain for pain, power versus power, and we do not want that. We want submission, love, mercy, kindness, compassion, the things that Jesus says is the way, the truth, and the life. So now, Jesus, start with us in the church who have been subtle religious rebels instead of loving, submissive revolutionaries. Forgive us. Have mercy on us. And Lord, for those who are sinners, who've never accepted the gift of Jesus Christ, may this be the beautiful day that they go, God, I am a sinner. I'm a rebel. And I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that girl anymore. Save me today. Have mercy on me. And if you confess your sin and turn, then your heart today will be transformed into something amazing. Lord, we thank you today. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. And everybody in every location said, amen. Love you guys.